In this video, I'm gonna go through two weeks and 68 hours worth of training out in Lanzarote. Going over the highs, lows, and learnings so that you can get an experience into what goes on in professional triathletes training camp. And whether or not Lanzarote is this uh, mecca of triathlon training. <laughs> But yeah, we're going to run through it all from start to finish, starting with... You mean the, the first half of the week? Yeah, the first half of the week. Yeah. I'm the first one to get off at the station There's something in the air that I can't play And now I see a silhouette But how have you found it so far? Well, I found it pretty tough, to be honest. Like, we flew Cardiff to Lanzarote straight in on Monday morning with a 6K swim in the pool, which was quite cold, to be honest. So <laughs> I think we we settled on reps between 600 and a K in distance and just boshed them out. Yeah. So we, we just did. wanted to get in and out as fast yeah. as possible. Yeah. But it wasn't very comfortable at all. So yeah, first day, 6K swim, 10K run, or just over. And then in the afternoon, we spent three hours 40 <laughs> on the bike and did a lot of threshold efforts. Yeah, so that, that was good. We did it up uh, Timofaya, is that what it's called? Yeah, the long, Timofaya the long in the hill? National Park. waiting on yesterday. Shouldn't be long. So that was really good, but tough because it was like a block headwind. So great for bike handling and what we wanted in terms of getting yeah. um, some bike work, because that's the whole focus of being out here in Lanzarote is to get better on the time trial bike. For yeah, just bikes. spending time in position, basically. Yeah, but the, the first couple of days, we basically found out that Lanzarote takes a lot longer to get around than we thought on the bikes. Yeah, yeah. So we've got an extra <laughs> hour and a half worth of riding in comparison to what was planned. But. Yeah. I think uh, we, we, we thought bringing the TT bikes out would be sort of cruising around a 32k an hour and it's just not been the case. No. So I think every route we've planned has been like 120%. Yeah, definitely. So... So in summary, it was pretty great. It was an amazing two weeks out there, just Yesen and I, and we did a ton of training, right? We did a lot of very good quality training, exactly what we needed this time of year uh, in order to prep for the season, essentially. Like we've got a load of base work done prior to that, and we've just gone and been quite specific out in Lanzarote, making sure that we're getting exactly what we need on the time trial bikes, but also in the swim and the run. <laughs> felt proper endurance based, I'm not going to lie, like across all three disciplines, but primarily actually the swim and the bike, because I guess in the s swimming, long course swimming is quite tough for one. And we do a little bit of long course swimming and we did all long course swimming out in Portugal, but we had a group of people to swim with. So swimming five, 10 seconds behind like we usually do is actually far easier than it is to just swim on your own in a lane because you get a bit of the whirlpool effect or draft effect. And swimming two weeks basically just on our own in the pool without anyone else in the lane was quite tough because you had to take all of the water and the resistance yourself. So that was a bit of an eye opener and quite muscular, but something that will definitely bode well going forward. And I think that's something that we should bear in mind for our training going forward as well. I feel as though I've come off of the back of this camp feeling really fit. Um, I don't feel as though it's taken as much out of me as Portugal did. I think that was a little bit more pushed for that time of year. And I've got a little bit more backing behind me going into this Lanzarote camp. Even though it was only three weeks or four weeks apart, 
I feel as though I'd done actually quite a good amount of like consistent solid training in between those two camps so that this one didn't actually take as much out of me. That being said, like I said just before, it was a little bit more muscular and a little bit more of a different stimulus because we were out on the time trial bikes. So again, we had to get our muscles used to that. It was a slightly different sensation and caused a few other little tightnesses around the body, but at the same time, still really good and good quality work that we were able to put in amongst those, uh, not discrepancies, but amongst those kind of nuances. So going through each of the disciplines, swimming, we were staying in Barcelo Active Resort, which was great. Really, really enjoyed the buffet, the kind of ease of just rolling out of bed into the pool if we wanted to. But the swimming as a whole, I'd say, as I mentioned before, was a little bit muscular, um, but the pool and the quality of the pool and the kind of swimming outdoors sensations were amazing. And it was really good to get a lot of good, consistent quality work in. We did four set, five sessions a week, about 25 kilometers a week um, for two weeks. And that equated to about seven and a half hours per week, so 15 hours in total of swimming. And that was more than enough, I'm not gonna lie. Like we did wear wetsuits one day because it was quite cold early morning. And that's, I think, something that should be bared in mind if you're swimming in Lanzarote. Like first thing in the morning, especially in March, can be a little bit fresh. But it was also dark. Like the first thing in the morning, seven o'clock, 7 a.m., we were in the water, trying to keep to our normal Cardiff schedule uh, because uh, we work best off that sort of schedule. Like if you can get a routine that you're used to, you can just roll through it nice and easy. We did have to kind of manipulate that a little bit because of the temperature though, and in order to get the quality sessions out when we could. So on a Tuesday, for example, we did put the um, swim session in the afternoon because it was a little bit warmer, whereas we found that the week prior, it was actually quite hard to get the session done properly because it was so cold in the, in the water. It did heat up as the sun came out over the next week, but again, just something to bear in mind and something that we struggled with a little bit. Two of the key sessions, uh, we did a pyramid threshold session, so that was about 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, and then 600 back down. That was really good, a threshold session, executed it really well, it was about 75 per 100 on average, I think it was. So not too bad, I mean, half decent swim shape, I'd say for me at this time of year. Um, and then another swim session that we did was 10 100s uh, off about an 85 base. Um, again, swimming about 70s, 70, 71s, and then into five by 400 meters, and then back down to 10 100s again, again swimming 71s, 72s, maybe by the back end, because I was getting a little bit tired. But yeah, all about kind of just above threshold, then threshold, then just above threshold again, just to get those mechanics working, and yeah, just making sure that that top end isn't missing as well. Other than that, it was primarily large aerobic sessions, so anything between four and six K. We didn't do too much technique work whilst we were out there. It was, again, mainly just working the aerobic and muscular systems. Um, that being said, I, I work on technique every single session. I'm thinking about it anyway. Really quickly, 74% of you who watch this channel have not yet hit the subscribe button. So do me a favor, and if you have ever enjoyed the channel, please hit it. The bigger the channel gets, the better the content, and hopefully the better insights and entertainment I can bring. Moving on to the bike. The bike was where we wanted to get better at TT handling and we were forced into that. It was necessary to get better at handling because it was so windy. Lanzarote is windy. It's, it is. Like everyone says about the wind, it lived up to expectations. And, and it lived up to its like mecca of triathlon training. Like, there was so many people out there and it was good. It was a really good training location, especially for cycling and swimming. Like the pool was pretty amazing, but especially cycling. The roads were really fast in terms of the asphalt, or uh, um, the speed of the roads, the kind of chippings were really close together. They were fast roads, but as previously mentioned, it was so slow because of the wind. So it really forced us into being better bike handlers, making sure that we were able to hold a good aerodynamic position under tough uh, situations and circumstances. And yeah, I, I guess we got exactly what we wanted and needed out of that. 
we did about 20 hours a week of cycling with about two sessions, two harder sessions per week, one threshold and then one about race pace. So that was really good and useful. So the threshold work is kind of to bump up that um, ability and then the race pace one is more about conditioning the muscles to be able to sustain that within a race. So yeah, that was amazing. And I think that was a bit better than Portugal because in Portugal I was working a little bit more within the squad and within like the people around me to benefit them a little bit more than myself. Not that it was a detriment to me at all. I think it was still really good to work within the squad, but this one was a little bit more specific to my powers. And I think that just like took the edge off the legs a little bit. And again, like I said earlier, having the TT bikes for two weeks out there, I was a little bit hesitant about it because you're working a slightly different muscle group or muscle groups uh, for two weeks solid, which I'm not used to. I'm used to interchanging that between my road bike and time trial bike throughout the week. So a little bit cautious, but it was fine. By week two, everything had settled down. I had to be careful that I didn't twinge anything because I got tight calves, especially as, as I'll go on to the surfaces for the running weren't ideal. But yeah, I think that being careful, making sure that I was looking after my calves, rolling them out, stretching them, and that nothing else was flaring up because of the time trial bike just allowed me to get the most out of putting out good power in that position, but also maintaining the other two disciplines alongside it. of spare batteries for the boys. Try that one. That flashed red. Yeah. Lastly, going on to the run, running I think was the one that I didn't find a massive benefit of being out there for, other than that it was sunny and I got a good like heat adaptation maybe. Um, I don't think that it was too dissimilar to being in Cardiff or the UK in terms of a benefit. Um, obviously, again, it was nicer to be in the sun and massive privilege to be out there doing that. But at the same time, I think that the surfaces weren't ideal. It was quite hard concrete underfoot. And luckily I had some decent shoes out there. So I had the On um, Eclipse shoes and I had the Hoka Bondi 8, both quite nice and cushioned. Um, but if you didn't have some nice spongy cushiony shoes, I think it would have really tightened your calves even more so than what the bike was doing. And then that could have caused some niggles. And I think that that was due to the location that we were in, in terms of Barcelo. I think that potentially La Santa has some better trails out there, but we weren't there. <laughs> we went past there a couple of times and we checked it out and we were like, yeah, that would be amazing. We could take people out there uh, for a camp with entire. Uh, we could benefit from it ourselves. But at the same time, we couldn't afford it. Uh, we booked relatively late and there weren't many rooms available. So maybe something for the future. If you're interested in that, do comment below because if we do put on a camp, we might be opening that up to uh, both our own clients in entire, but others as well, potentially, we'll see. But yeah, running, I, I did 90 to 100 kilometers per week, uh, which is roughly an average for me at the moment, um, with one session instead of two sessions, but on the second, um, longer run or longer session of the week I'd ride beforehand and then run with Yeston on the Sunday so that we were just being a bit more social because we're out there together. It is worth noting that the session that we did do was on the treadmill each week so instead of running outside on 
potentially hard surfaces, we opted for a little bit more control in, on the treadmill. Yes, it was hot and we did get pretty toasty in the gym um, in Barcelo, but it was nice to have that control, nice to have that for measuring lactics, etc., and just getting the work done, a quality work done easily and effectively, just outside our bedroom, essentially. So yeah, that's pretty much my roundup of Lanzarote. It is the triathlon mecca or training mecca that everyone says it is. It's pretty amazing. It's outstanding how many people are out there to train. And it was so nice to have quite a few of you come up to me and say, oh, I hope your season goes well, etc." It's always really nice to hear that people are supporting the channel and investing in the journey, etc., etc. But yeah, just the amount of people that were at breakfast, lunch and dinner or whatever it was at the hotel. And you can see specifically that they were out there to train either as an age group or a professional uh, swim group, triathlon group, whatever it was. We also managed to go and check out a Sands Beach because we went over to see some of the peak performance members, uh, which was really nice and fulfilling for Yes and I just share some of our experience as well. So that was another highlight of the two weeks. Um, got to get out and spend some time away from one another as well, or with each other, but with other people, which was always good. Um, not that we were fed up of one another at all, but just something else to do and talk about. If you do have any other questions about what we got up to in Lanzarote, do hit up the comments below, or check out the description below for some more kind of like newsletters or insights or blogs or whatever it is. And yeah, hit subscribe button if you've got any value or insights, and I hope to see you next time.